Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where I am once again experimenting with stereo versus mono recording channels and I hope this works. Oh my gosh, I'm terrified. <laughs> um, I think I've done it. I think stereo is usually but I'm not going to go into it. I've, I've experimented with it in the past. I tend to flip back and forth on which one I prefer. So... Hopefully it is good. Anyway, let's go explore the ship because they have made some changes to it. Can I click on it? The people, weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. The overall readiness of the galaxy determines how effectively these assets will be performed in the final battle. Um, I do like that they include things like uh, Khalisa Bin Al Jalani. Um, she's like reporter stuff, you know. Like it's civil. It's not just military stuff. It's civilian movements. It's it's you know reporter. It's government. You know whatever we can do. You know, but obviously we have a lot of alliance support right out the gate. Uh, but eventually we'll get more for other stuff too. So here's your yeah. So here I can I'm pointing with my hand, but I can actually use my mouse if I want to. I think. Yeah, this is the minimum if you, whenever you want to engage in, like with the Reapers at the at the end of the game. Um, but you're not gonna do very well. But I think there comes like I think you I think you can only get to like maybe here. Um, unless they've changed it in the legendary edition where they've just removed it entirely. I think I remember hearing something about that that they've removed the like extraneous um, like you no longer can have access to the to the app, so they basically just taken it out of the Legendary Edition. Because sometimes there would be, like, pop-ups and stuff that would be like, oh, you, how are you, you know, you need stuff from here, and it's like, what? And then you, it's like, it's the mobile app, you know, it's the mobile game uh, extension. So, I feel like they may have removed that. The Alliance Engineering Corps cuts roads through mountains and builds bases on asteroids, but the bulk of the AEC has active wartime duties. Their brightest are helping build the device of Perthian origin recovered on Mars. Due to the staggering amount of raw materials required, the AEC has been given unprecedented emergency funding for any alliance resources that will not interfere with the deployment of the troops. It's interesting always to me that, like, in severe, like, like, like crises, 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 um, crises, uh, that money is still a thing, um, that, like, they're like, we need mass amounts of funding so that we can build this thing, and it's like, well, don't you think people would just do it? you know, so that they could survive, you know, the oncoming onslaught of whatever is happening, you know, um, but that would only work if people could get, like, a secure food source that was just given to them, you know what I mean, um, as, like, payment, but also, like, I could see how people wouldn't appreciate that either, right, they want to be able to, they want to be able to do it on their own, they want to be able to have their own source of, like, ability to get supplies and they feel like money is the way to do that right like they can purchase supplies if they need to like for the like food you know food bedding medicine stuff like that for the individual and you don't necessarily want to have it handed to you you know because like i don't know in this sort of situation it just feels like what's like money is useless it seems you know like money it's the end of days you know, like, what are you going to buy? Like, a house on Mars? Like, you know? Uh, but, like, and, like, supplies are so limited anyway. Like, the price of food goes up exponentially. You know, it almost feels like I'd, I'd rather get, you know. But then again, like, you have, like, the choice of what you want to purchase, what you want to spend your money on, you know. But it's, like, also, like, the resource extraction. Like, why would I have to pay, like, a mining corporation for the materials for this when I could just say, hey, if you want to survive, give it to me, you know, which some of them would, but like then they have no money to give their people, you know what I mean? It's this whole thing, but it's interesting. I see it in a lot in like uh, space, especially, especially like sci-fi stuff, but I'll, I don't know, any, any sort of like war, anything that involves like a war, like medieval or historical or whatever, you know? money is always like a thing and it's like well sure maybe you're hoping you'll survive and like have money at the end of everything but like you just at this point like we're faced with like this isn't just like a war you know like, i can see it in like a like a regular war but this is like galactic annihilation we're facing like perhaps money isn't even going to be a thing after this like maybe like the monetary system is going to be like 
completely thrown out the window after this because it's just not anyway i'm sorry i'm philosophizing i don't know enough about economic systems to like really philosophize on it but it's interesting and i do want to learn more about economics i need to find like economics for dummies specifically i think it's interesting in like a trade like uh pre not prehistoric but like ancient um trade routes and stuff like that i find that really interesting um the old saying every marine is a rifleman still holds true in the alliance is that a thing it's probably a thing Every Marine enlistee from clerk to sniper goes through a period of infantry training. As a result, the 103rd Marine Division is Earth's largest collection of Special Forces soldiers, officers from notable battles such as Scully and Blitz in the First Contact War, run harsh training exercises in a variety of environments, assisting the Marines to be prepared to storm any beach on any planet. This training has been useful in the Reaper War, as the 103rd can be fighting in an Arctic desert one week and crawling through jungles the next. Rough. For real. The first fleet was stationed near Caron Relay when the Reapers invaded the Soul System. By the time Admiral Hackett issued the order to retreat, it says, which we haven't talked about, but Admiral Hackett did issue a retreat order. When does I don't know where it goes into that. Maybe maybe I need to do like a whole like uh, codex reading, like couple of entries. I think I did that that first time, where like I would play like several episodes and then I'd have like a whole codex reading like episode, you know. Um, just to kind of keep keep everyone up to date, because there's actually really important information for the game for this game particularly in the codex, like updates on the Reaper War and stuff like that. Not like super essential, but really good to know for background information. Uh, because I think I feel like somewhere Hackett goes into like the details, like the hardship, the like uh, fraught nature of calling for a retreat, you know, and leaving Earth behind, you know. The size of the first fleet, once the largest in the Alliance Navy, had been cut in half. Commanding Admiral Ennis Lindholm made the painful decision to use a tenth of the fleet's remaining vessels as cover so the remaining could escape. Her gamble paid off as the first fleet limped out of the relay to rally with the rest of the Alliance forces on the run. The third, this fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the council right during the Battle of Citadel two years ago. Unfortunately, the Alliance did not have time to rebuild the fleet to its previous strength before the Reapers invaded. So this is why its number is kind of low, 65. And I will, they will update, I think, as they go. I think we get missions that involve, like, first, third fleet, seventh fleets, whatever, um, that involve, like, getting resources and soldiers to them specifically. So we'll get updates on them as the game goes. Um, I am, I, I hope I'm remembering this correctly, and if I am, I'm surprised I'm remembering as much as I am. Um, but, yeah, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, so this wouldn't, this, this update wouldn't be the case if we hadn't protected, um, the council. Um, also, I've never played, if you don't save the council, it becomes a, hu a human council, and I've never played with that. I start, I did it, did I? I am trying to think. I did it once. I was doing like a renegade thing on live on Twitch a long time ago, but I ended up not being able to. Oh my gosh, is that? A, oh my gosh, sorry. I thought there was a massive spider on the wall. It's not a spider. Um, there was an issue. I was having an issue getting my DLCs to work, and I did not want to play Mass Effect Three without having completed the DLCs for Mass Effect Two. Um, I was very upset. Uh, so I ended up not finishing, and it was hard enough to do a Renegade run in my mind. Like I, I have a very difficult time doing the Renegade. Like some of it's super great. Like I love some of it, but some of it, especially in Mass Effect One, you're kind of racist. Like you know, um, like against like you're like speciesist, ist, you know, you're like damn aliens, you know, and, blah, 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 blah. and it's like Ugh, you know, and it's and then also I am I am a firm Renegade. Uh, a firm believer of the renegade that is not mean to their friends. <laughs> Maybe we're a little short with them, but I do not. Like, I can't be mean to Tally, like, of all people. You know what I mean? And, like, you would have you would have a few soft spots, I think, if you're not a monster completely. Some people do choose to be a total monster, and that's, like, you're, like if you want to do that, that's fine. It's just a very big investment for a very, very sad pay, um, payout, I guess. Stationed at Arcturus. The third fleet is headed by the Admiral Nitesh Singh. When the Reapers came for the station, Singh had already pulled his command ship, the SSV Logan, back to an ideal firing position for its mass accelerator cannons. The Dreadnought's guns managed to slow down the destroyer before it could demolish the third fleet, but Singh was for I'm not sure I'm saying that right, by the way. Hit the last name, but was forced to retreat in the face of overwhelming opposition from the Reapers. Again, lost a third of its vessels. So they, we were already kind of at not great capacity when the Reapers came. Which I think is something we could push. 
honestly in the narrative and the propaganda or with Udina and the politicians that like humanity sacrificed to save the council they sacrificed to save the Asari specifically the Asari dreadnought from the reapers in Mass Effect 1 right like two years ago or whatever it is um, and that's, that's an angle I feel like we could really push hard is that we sacrificed our ships and our people for that and like we are like again the outcome doesn't change like Earth doesn't fare any better if like you have um, the, the ships that are still there. You know what I mean? Like, there's only so much they could do <laughs> with, like, cutscenes and, like, story narrative to, like, flex to that degree. But, um, you would have higher starting alliance numbers. Um, I think, though, when we say, when we get more Asari resources, we will actually have access, I think, to the Asari Dreadnought, which maybe balances out a bit. I could be wrong. The fifth fleet became famous across the galaxy after spearheading alliance forces at the Battle of the Citadel. It was guarding our tourist station when the Reapers attacked. After a bloody and desperate battle, Admiral Hackett gave the order to retreat, sacrificing the entirety of the alliance second fleet to give the third and fifth fleets a chance to escape. The fifth fleet's engineers are busy repairing damaged vessels and grimly anticipating a return to Earth and revenge against the Reapers. Like, how do you decide which fleet to use to, like, sacrifice to save others? You know what I mean? Like, sure, I assume, I, I would assume each fleet is basically, like, a cookie-cutter version, you know? You don't have fleets that, like, specialize necessarily in different things. Like, the whole idea is that, like, you are cookie-cutter fleets that you can put everywhere that have a variety of abilities within them. That's what I would think. I've only been reading, I only read Thrawn, so <laughs> I only read Thrawn stuff, so that I don't know, that's what I think. <laughs> Diana Allers, right, you get five for her. We will get more for her, though. We'll get updates. Uh, the Normandy SR... I get 115 for the SR2 and 5 for Diana Allers. I think she's supposed to be based off a famous reporter or something. Somebody's probably already told me in the comments, um, again, because I've probably been told, like, eight times in my life. Um, but, I don't know. She just felt like a very weird... Also, I did hear... I think I did hear that the, act, the voice actress who voiced Emily Wong was, like, unable or didn't want to reprise her role. Um, even though she was everyone's, like, favorite reporter, um, in the game, uh, which, I mean, there's only, there's only two, you know, but <laughs> it's not hard to beat Al Jelani. Um, but yeah, I think she wasn't able to reprise her role or didn't want to. Um, when the original SSB Normandy was destroyed, Cerberus rebuilt the ship from stolen Alliance plans, dubbed the SR2. The Alliance took the new Normandy apart and refitted some of its systems and new technology of its own. As a result, the SR2 is the highest performing frigate in the entire Alliance Navy and possibly the fastest ship in its class. The Normandy gets commanded by Shepard, an Alliance officer in Humanity's first Spectre. I can't believe Anderson was going to take my ship from me. He's like, this would be my mobile command center. Which, to be fair, if I had to serve under Anderson, I'd be like, woo, sure, you know. Um, but only if he let me back in, if he had left me under house arrest, and, like, <laughs> freaking took my ship. I would be very sad. Oh, yes. So we have the updates from Mass Effect 2, where we where we upgraded the ship, the Thanix cannon, the the armor, and the barrier technology. Yep. Mineral resources from the last game. Whoop, whoop. They seized all recovered elements. The surplus, material surplus has gone towards building the Prothean device. A hundred, a hundred points from that. Nice. Freaking Al Jelani's got ten. It's okay. Diana starts out low because, again, we do get, I think, we, I'm pretty sure we get updates from her that give her more points. Westerland News reporter Kalisha Bint, oh, it's Bint Al, Bint, Ben Sanan Al Jelani, I was missing that whole like third name, reached out recently to reviews of the wartime plea for unity and cooperation. Uh, her sincerity touched extra net viewers and donations for war relief are pouring in both two lions and alien allies. I'm not 100% sure how this comes out if you punch her. I did try to punch her once, um, but I think I didn't have enough. Um, there's like, I think there's like a sec, you can punch her once or something, and then like there's a second one. Um, and I think I was unable to make that because I didn't have enough Renegade, I think. And she, like, freaking, like, counter punches you and knocks you on your butt. And uh, it was humiliating to have a reporter, like, trounce a military officer. I reloaded that. I was like, nope. I kind of just wanted to see what would happen. Um, you know, like, I wasn't actually going to go through with it. Well, maybe I was, actually, because she, really, she was really frustrating me. <laughs> but, like... At the, but I just kind of wanted to see what it what would happen, and she absolutely if you miss if you mess up she trounces you, and it's really frustrating. Like it's re really embarrassing, not necessarily frustrating. Okay, you're not someone I can talk to. Neither are you. But look at all this stuff. 
So it seems like um, Shepard, or not Shepard, Anderson was kind of trying to prep for the Reapers in his own way. Um, he was he was retrofitting the Normandy and being like, oh, we need to, you know, do all the, like probably kind of couching it in like uh, different language, not, not, not necessarily about the Reapers. It's true. Like people get it, right? Like some people do. I, I, this use that used to actually take a lot longer. I think it's supposed to be like a loading screen, and it's frustrating. Look at this person moving around. Well, sanctum. Uh, also, I do really enjoy that people walk around in this version. Thank you. I will look at that right now. <sighs> Alliance forces are stretched thin. We need your specific talents for a series of ops. The missions will open doors for the Alliance in places we can't touch through conventional means. We'll deploy operatives to hold points after you completed your objectives. I need you to head to a server lab. Cool. Uh, and he'll bother me when I'm on, I'm on my way. Reinstatement. This formally acknowledges my reinstatement. Blah, blah, blah. I'm hereby authorized. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm granted diplomatic authority to establish treaties with non human races as required to support your mission, which is massive. Honestly, my reinstatement does not include that. That's extra. Flash, flash, bug, alliance, meh. This is a galaxy wide alert for all human territories. Threat condition, Saber 1. Earth under Reaper attack. All alliance military personnel directed to evacuate soul system. Oh my goodness. Not even gonna try to go to. Yeah, do not, do not attempt Earth approach. Do not attempt Earth approach. And that, I mean, it's it's horrible. It sucks, but like it makes sense. Like on your like, if you if you threw like a few frigates in that, trying to be like, oh, we're gonna break through. Like, a, what are you gonna do when you get if, if you got it? And B, you're just gonna die, and you could be used in a different way. As 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 terrible as it sounds, you know. And like, I get it. Like some people would try, and like I wouldn't blame them, but you're just gonna die. Uh, all remaining Alliance personnel on the outside the Soul Theater, directed to most pre-appointed staging areas. Independent action is authorized. Also, how in the world are we going to keep this Prothean bit, the device secret? Like, I think I think they go into it a little bit, but, like, or maybe they don't. They're just like, yeah, it's totally secret. But, like, Cerberus has basically infiltrated a lot of our stuff. Um, the, the Reapers have spent, like, decades, um, in some cases, like, getting... Um, like operatives in place, like like uh, brainwashing or bribing people, you know, um, and like they have, like the indoctrination and everything. It's just like, I don't think we'd be able to keep it secret, you know. My dog. I was a contractor working on the Normandy's haptic interface when it was in dry dock. Your VIED emailed me to let me know I left my dog mech on board. I'm all the way out in Terra Nova now and hate for you to go a million clicks out everywhere to drop off my dog. Please just take care of her. It's like exploring, sniffing chemical trails and 750 volt outlets. Thank you and sorry for the trouble. I promise she won't be too much of a headache. I have a dog? Uh, I don't remember that. The Corian fleet. Where is the Corian fleet? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but, huh, Turian, and yeah, they have other concerns. They, well, they're keeping it a secret. Greedy and short-sighted powers will always try to gain the upper hand in times of galactic crisis. We only hope that whatever the Quarians are playing does not interfere with the one thing that should matter, stopping the Reapers. And people are always freaking hating on the Quarians, too. Edie, while we were in dry dock, Joker suggested a small welcome. Joker suggested a small welcoming gift would be appropriate to have on hand should you be reinstated as commanding officer. As the ship did not, does not have the capacity to accommodate the dancers he suggested, I choose. I chose something from this official systems alliance catalog. Soldiers who have held an N7 designation for five or year more are entitled to a commemorative hooded jacket for wear on off-duty hours. Hours you will find it among the selection of casual clothing in your cabin. Hey, I got that in two, but we only got that in two because it was from Mass Effect 3 and they included it in two in the Legendary Edition. That's really sweet of her. Some of the data you allowed me to research an upgrade for you. Simply access the terminal in Dr. Tony's office at your convenience and you may choose how and when to implement it. Have a pleasant day. Remember Glyph from the Shadow Broker DLC? Um, Glyph, we'll, we'll get messages from Glyph. Because it's holding down the fort at the old Shadow Broker base, I believe. And Liara is using the Normandy as her mobile one. 
priority, Eden Prime. So Cerberus has attacked Eden Prime and is now occupying its colony, or the colony. Alliance forces are stretched too thin right now to attempt to liberate the colony. But we've been doing what we can to covertly aid the local resistance. In the process, we've learned that Cerberus has uncovered a major pro- Again? Why haven't we been scanning? Eden Prime had a huge Prothean artifact, like, oh, two years ago. And we haven't freaking... I get it, though. Like, there's so much to do and only so much you can do, you know? We don't know what it is, but it appears to be the reason for the attack on the colony. We need you to infiltrate the colony and recover the artifact, just like the good old days. All right, Samantha Taylor, let's talk. Commander, come to check on your new recruit. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. Next time you need something, just ask. You're not alone here. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush is a Scission Promark 4. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque and massage the gums. It costs 6,000 credits. Okay, yeah. You're on your mm. own map. In any event, I appreciate you giving me the chance to stay. Was there anything The else? last version of you died! I do end up in the military anyway. My family didn't have money for university. When the Alliance saw my aptitude scores, they offered me a full scholarship. I served my required years after graduation and decided to stay. I really like the challenges of the lab. Al although, I'm sure I'll grow to love frontline service as well. well. It takes a very different person to be able to do that. <laughs> I'm surprised you're worrying about it. Oh, I'm being mean. We got bigger problems I'm being right mean. Now. Oh, believe me. Seeing the Reapers on Earth was terrifying. But I won't help anybody by bursting into tears here in the CIC, will I? Being here on the Normandy helps. If anyone in the galaxy can stop the Reapers, it's you. And if flagging your messages and managing strategic intel helps you in any way, then it's worth it. Yeah, she's definitely overqualified to be my VI, essentially. She's my communications officer. Um, but everybody's got to have multiple jobs, you know? You worked in Alliance R&D? Yes. You'd think quantum entanglement would make communication easy, but imagine incorporating multiple incoming sources and then networking them with extrapolations of time lag data to construct a coherent situation GUI. It's an exciting challenge. Um, for me, anyway. <laughs> I love just the dead, the dead pants there. Where are you from originally? A colony in the Terminus systems, actually. Though I studied on Earth, at Oxford. My parents were from London. They loved Earth, but they wanted the freedom a colony life could offer. If they stayed in London, I imagine they'd be dead right now. A lot of people back on Earth are still alive. And I don't know, London's pretty... Quite true. Commander. London's pretty trashed. Carry on, specialist. I'm pretty sure the final mission, actually, like the final run... Can I talk to you? Oh, I can just have you salute me. Um, is in London. I vaguely recall seeing, like, Big Ben messed up and everything. Joker, my man, they finally sealed this here for you. This game, this game was made. Oh, when was this game made? I knew it, yeah, okay. I, I feel like I remember saying this when I first played the game. Uh, but this game was made in I was, I was mixing up the dates there. Uh, I hope I edited that out. But um, I remember thinking that it reminded me of post 9/11, um, where you can't, you couldn't see the pilots. Like they basically, like um, they would close 
those doors and lock them for like years after i've been flying a bit recently this year and they were keeping the doors open again um at least uh when people were boarding it after 9 11 for many years um you would walk onto the plane and the pilots would already be like already be like locked in like you couldn't you couldn't see them except for through the front glass a little bit you know but you yeah they when i before that when i was little they'd come out and they you know they'd wave at kids and stuff and maybe give you a sticker or something you know, and be like, oh, look, I'm a pilot. And kids are like, well, it's a pilot, you know, like, just stuff like that sometimes, you know. Post 9 11, they were locked in there very quickly and, like, you couldn't get in. They, like, reinforced the doors on a lot of them, you know, like, so that you couldn't break in. Um, but recently, it seems like, at least this year, I noticed they were kind of uh, relaxing that a bit. At least some were, they would leave the doors open. Because I remember as a kid, I used to love to look in, like, before when I was, I was just 10. I was, t- I was almost 11 when 9-11 happened, and uh, I remember before that, we would fly a lot, and I would go I would go and look, and sometimes the pilots would let you come in to their little cockpit, you know, and you could look at the buttons up close, but I remember seeing that just board of buttons and being like, whoa, it's super cool, you know, even when they'd let you, like, peek in, and it was even cooler when they'd let you come in and look at them, you know, but they didn't do that for a very long time um, after 9-11. Uh, and that was the other thing about the intro that I almost brought up, but I didn't think I could do it. But um, the intro from Mass Effect 3, I don't know, I'm not trying to be flippant about this, but in some ways it did remind me of the videos I would see on 9-11 um, when I watched the live feeds, you know, when people were falling out of the buildings. And the thing I remember the most is seeing the debris clouds coming down the streets and people like running away from them and hiding under cars and coming out like you'd see them later like covered in blood and dust and that's what I think of sometimes with um I was very young (laughs) when I watched all that of course you know our schools tried to make it so that we didn't at least my school didn't have it on some schools had it on my school in the classroom didn't have it on but we would all take passes to the library half of us ended up in the library because the librarians had like five tvs up with different news networks and we would watch it we'd go in there and watch we'd hide behind the racks and watch like the book racks um obviously i didn't experience it personally like in the moment you know but seeing that leaves a mark on your little little kid brain you know so that's what i think of when i see the mass effect 3 intro as well so anyway let me just continue being emotional on main i also keep looking i don't know if you guys keep seeing me put my face into everything but i keep looking for um, the codex entries that you used to get um when you walk down the hallway but i think i have them (laughs) i don't know if you get i don't know if uh, i just have them already so the game doesn't do them or uh if if the game would let you click on them and get stuff Later. Anyway, Joker, where's freaking Edie at? Where's she at? I I, hey, I actually don't know. You know, I had my doubts about <laughs> But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't. Uh, it's so frustrating. They're doing everything they can. Did they at least validate our parking? I'm going to Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them, you know, for all time's sake. <laughs> Joker. Commander. Joker, how you been? Freaking, I feel like we should have more to say to Joker. I don't think I have. This is my first time being able to walk around the ship, and like I haven't seen him in six months. I've been under house arrest. What has he been doing? I think he'll tell me later. But um, it's like, how have you been? <laughs> you know, Joker, you have been through everything with me. You know, and right now I don't have a ton of companions. We have a very um. What's the word? Uh, bare bones skeleton crew. This whole room they've been taken out. By the way, there was a whole room there, and they've they've, they've taken it out. <sighs> Elevator. We can go to the shuttle bay now, though. There are people in the shuttle bay. Really quick, though, I do want to go here. Uh, the place where fish go to die. Also, where's the, the little dog? Where's my hamster? Yeah bathroom oh i'm pretty sure in the original version you didn't have a reflection i'm pretty sure i remember trying to see if i had a reflection and it was just like kind of like a opaque glass 
So you didn't. Hey, there's the Normandy. Oh, where's the rest of my? Did they freaking? They freaking took all my stuff. Yeah. Get out! 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 I don't have any of my pictures. I still have some of my books. I have my service medal. But where's my hamster? I actually really like the casual clothes in this one. Um, do I have the ca- Oh my gosh. No, it wasn't Casa. What was it? What was the one? I, it wasn't Casa in the last game. Castro. It was Castro. Uh, I don't like that one. What does it do? Shield regen? Oh. It does take away my health boost, though. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't have any more of that. I have... Ooh, melee damage. Malay damage. I do like that. You can do a little more. Ooh, I like that. I do like that. Um, tin uh, lights. Lights are fine. Wait, uh, casual. I do like that one, too. I don't know why they give me that option. What is... One. This one's just beefier. Right? Yeah, it's beefier. I like it. Uh, and the classic hoodie look. Dang it! I need to get... I need to get the mod that gives me the... The other dress back. <laughs> this one. I don't know. It just makes me look like one of those reporter ladies. I don't like it at all. Like, I, it's all right. It's not the worst thing. But also, I don't like that they, they changed Shepard's body model. She's a, she's a heavy, not heavy set. She's a, she's a muscular woman. And they, this one, I remember, I think I actually remember liking this one better. Because it does give her some of that, like, shoulder breadth back. And it's like, look, she wasn't, like... A freaking Zarya from Overwatch, but like she was very muscular. She didn't have spaghetti arms. Okay, let's do that. Where's my hamster? Also, where's the dog? I think this is the. The list of people that we lost in two? Is it the twenty? I'm not, I don't 100% remember because I don't think we, we didn't really have an official crew assigned. I don't like that they've closed this off. Oh, sweet, the Destiny Ascension. I forget that apparently they packaged some of my stuff. Put it around the ship. I do like the upgrades they made. You do get to see people playing poker in here sometimes. It's fun. Important in any uh, wartime vessel is a place for people to chillax. And in this one, they don't let you go, depending on what your gender is, they don't let you go into the opposite one. Like, why? <laughs> like, it's not something I was worried about before until they locked it off to me. Now I'm like, why won't you let me in? <laughs> so we made some changes here. I have to admit, I don't, I don't like the couches in Mass Effect. I don't like them. They look kind of weird. Liara is in here. She's in there. Miranda's old office. Oh, uh, shoot. I should... Uh, I did that. We only really... Yeah, I should go uh, on this one. It's getting a little long. Sorry, I kind of just was chatting and reading stuff. Uh, we'll find... There's a few more people to talk to throughout the ship, for sure, right now. And then we will go to Paladin. There's not much more to be doing. Not, not a ton of people to talk to. But I do want to do... I like to do a thorough walkthrough of my ship every time I come to a new game. Um, for the people and just to get a feel for my ship again. So... 
Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Guido, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support. Once again, I hope you're enjoying the series. And thank you again for your support. You're the best. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.